This is Saudi Arabia today, and this is Saudi Arabia in 2030. Saudi Arabia making a skyscraper city. Saudi Arabia appears to have done what no one. Saudi Arabia is building a futuristic city. Saudi Arabia plans to develop at least 20 multi-million dollar projects over the next seven years in order to boost its tourist business and diversify away from its dependence on oil and gas revenues. And they call this the Vision 2030. One of the most recent Vision 2030 announcements has been the launch of an entirely new air carrier. They call it Riyadh Air. I believe Riyadh Air will ultimately dethrone Emirates and Qatar Airways from the skies of the world. So let's find out how they would exactly do that and why would they want to do that. Introducing a brand new chapter in the sky. A world-class airline flying to over 100 destinations by 2030. Connecting the whole world to the capital city of Riyadh. Riyadh Air will become Saudi's second national airline that established in March of 2023. It will be connecting the kingdom to more than 100 destinations worldwide by 2030, which is ambitious because Saudi's primary national airline, Saudia, serves only 90 plus destinations. This airline also plans on attracting passengers with brand new aircraft, luxurious premium cabins, and an emphasis on Saudi hospitality, of course. The airline is also planning to be the largest in the Middle East in terms of revenue. So, why don't we look at some comparisons here? Now, Riyadh Air will be flying to 100 destinations by 2030, right? We figured that out. That's the goal. And has currently ordered a fleet of 33 Boeing 787-9 Dreamliners. And is rumored to place an order of another 39 more. That's a lot of Dreamliners. Now, they're also aiming 300 to 400 narrow-body aircrafts in the next 10 years with Boeing 737 MAX. But they're only going to be having 75 aircrafts by 2030. That's still a lot. That's more than a lot of airlines' entire fleet. If Riyadh Air actually travels to 100 plus destinations by 2030, then it would be above Etihad Airways and Saudi Arabia automatically. That's uh, that's a quite a big jump here. So, you see, Saudi has all the money to be a top competitor in the skies. They could go ahead and compete with Emirates and Qatar, right? But to me, the more important question here is why? Why launch an entirely new airline brand while you already have Saudi Arabia's wide body fleet and its destinations and its customers? You know, they already have their trust. And they could have just improved the Saudi Airlines experience. They could have added more first and business class seats. They could have maybe even had a new livery and improved the premium experience. But why didn't they do that? What are we missing here and why have they launched an entirely new airline? So, by now, we figured out what Riyadh Air aims to have by 2030. Now, there are two points to this, right? The first is Riyadh versus Dubai competition, and second, Saudi Arabia's existing history. Let's begin with first. So, 
just like I said in the beginning, Vision 2030 wants to make Saudi a tourist destination. That's the main goal. But one city that has been the focal point of this vision is Riyadh. As part of Saudi Vision 2030, Riyadh is undergoing a radical transformation to further enhance the city's potential, attractiveness, and vibrancy. The National Tourism Strategy seeks to attract 100 million annual visits to Saudi Arabia by 2030 and raise the tourism sector's contribution to the GDP by more than 10%. So let's say we are in 2030 and if anyone is traveling from London Heathrow to Saudi, they really don't want people to say, I'm traveling to Saudi. They want people to say, I'm traveling to Riyadh. You see, it's more like how most people in the world think that Dubai is a country. But I'm sorry to break this to you that Dubai is in UAE, United Arab Emirates, and Dubai is not even the capital of UAE. So that is sort of what they want to achieve. They want people to be extremely familiar with the term Riyadh itself. Now, how do they do that? They develop Riyadh radically and make it the country's largest hub with its largest financial district, of course, and other tourism places. And obviously, with an airline that literally has a name of the city you're traveling to. And so, with every Riyadh air experience, you can sense that Riyadh itself would have that same premium experience like their airline. The second, which I think is also as important as the first point, is because of Saudi's mixed reviews and bad critic rating. There are multiple videos on YouTube and online across internet about how Saudi could improve, how their crew could be better, and maybe that could be one of the other reasons. Also, unlike UAE, Saudi, or Saudi already has two very popular destinations, Jeddah and Medina. And people travel here in abundance for religious and business purposes. So when people travel with Saudi Arabia, most travelers cannot identify the premium experience that Emirates has because the reputation that Saudi Arabia has created will take a lot of time for them to convert to a much more positive or a premium airline-like experience like Emirates or Qatar Airways have developed. So, so they just created a new airline. And now, there is a distinction. So when you see Saudi Arabia, you see religious and business travelers that don't care about leisure. Leisure is not their top priority. But now when you see Riyadh Air, you can resonate that with leisure air traveling or more in the eyes of tourism. And they've done a few smart things to identify as a premium airline, which is my most favorite part. So let's get right into it. You see, Riyadh Air haven't yet revealed the interior cabins or what their business class or first class product would actually look like or what their interior would look like. Three things that makes Riyadh Air instantly smarter than most flight carriers around the globe. Number one is livery design. Now, out of all the colors in the world, they picked purple and lavender as primary livery shades. And as we may all know, purple does signify royal and rich color for centuries now. And painting the entire livery in itself is considered to be an expensive process. And there aren't many airlines who actually do this. However, because it is uncommon to see a fully painted airplane, a fully painted airplane other than white, people will take attention from a distance. So when you see a blue airline or a blue plane at the airport or in the skies, you can probably guess that it is KLM. And now when you see a purple airplane, you can guess it's real there. So that was a smart choice of color there for their livery design. Number two on the list is ordering wide body Dreamliners. I think ordering 33 787 Dreamliners was honestly just a flex because they could have simply done with a 737 or a A320, but Dreamliners itself are considered to be the most premium of the category. Because as soon as you think a Dreamliner, you think about its ambience, you think about bigger windows, about better leg space comfort, or more space in the overhead luggage. So it creates that premium sort of feeling in the head. And the third, which they've absolutely nailed, is marketing. You see, this airline does not launch until six months from now, and sometime in 2024. 
but they've already created the hype. They had an entire launch event and they had this airline fly over Riyadh at multiple various points in Riyadh simply because they want people talking about the airline, not just in the aviation industry, but everywhere in the globe. So when you talk about Riyadh Air, you would talk about Vision 2030. So it creates a win-win situation for the country. So they've done some absolute brilliant stuff with marketing. But after all of these successful campaigns, it is still going to be bloody hard for Riyadh Air to compete. And I'll explain why. Okay, now, more aircraft enthusiasts would probably agree with me here, uh, but getting the hard product right isn't that tough if you have the money, and Saudi Arabia has the cash, so they would most likely obtain the ideal experience for you on board, but what will genuinely last is the soft product. What is a soft product? On-time departures, on-board service, and check-in experience, etc. would actually attract neutral passengers again and again. And that's what actually makes people love Emirates and Qatar Airways in the first place. And this matters. This does matter, particularly for economy class passengers. Because economy class is more or less the same. No matter what airline you fly with, you have a small TV, you have similar leg space, you have the same 343 layout in most airlines. So passengers really value the soft product in this scenario. You see, Emirates and Qatar Airways have become a sort of a dream for people. Regular people wish to travel at least once and experience these airlines and experience the X Factor. Now, each airline has its own X Factors that stays unbeatable. For Emirates, it could be the large selection of entertainment service, a bar or a shower experience, right? For Qatar, it could be the Q Suite alone. So Riyadh Air would need to quickly find the X Factor to remain sustainable for the long game. So yes, they have got a few things right here, but we cannot make the decision until we actually experience it firsthand. But so far so, they have been successful to create the hype at least. And airline wars are just gonna get more fiery than ever. Good for us. Well, 